you have to go to a church? Uh-oh, you know, now you're going to get involved in, you know, you got to join our church or we won't baptize you. You know, you got to be a member here. Uh, no, you can baptize yourself or... Um, hallelujah. We're all members of one body under the authority of the same Lord, Colossians 1, 18 tells us. But you know, as Christians, we're supposed to emulate Christ. He's supposed to be our hero, our perfect example. He's the one we should follow after. I mean, he commanded us to follow his example in all things, including baptism, Matthew 28, 19. When, when Jesus started his ministry, John the Baptist, who was calling the Jewish people to confess their sins and, and demonstrate repentance through immersion in the Jordan River, you know, the, the Son of God, who had no sin, asked John to baptize him. Uh, Jesus was affiliating himself with sinful man, yet he was without sin himself. So when we follow his example in the waters of baptism, we're publicly confessing our faith in the Savior, and we're affiliating ourselves with Him, okay? When you get baptized, you, you demonstrate your connection not only with Jesus, but with brothers and sisters in the faith, okay? We're all members of one body under the authority of the same Lord, Colossians 1, 18 tells us. It's important, I think, to remember that baptism is not a requirement for salvation, okay? Baptism in and of itself does not save you. Okay, only faith in Jesus Christ is what saves you. Uh, clearly, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9 tell us that. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, nor of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, but for us to be obedient, we're to be baptized after making the decision to follow after Christ. I mean, for for the perfect example of, of someone going to heaven without being baptized, the thief on the cross next to Jesus, he wasn't baptized. I'm pretty sure he didn't say a sinner's prayer or go through any kind of ritual, but Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. You know, belief in Jesus isn't something you should hide away like a light under a bowl, Luke 11:33. It should be expressed in words and actions. So have you matched your confession of faith with the act of baptism? If not, do it. Uh, who ministers to you? Who feeds you with the word of God? You know, you can show God's grace and thankfulness by taking care of the, the pastors, the preachers, the, the missionaries, and the teachers who serve God by serving you. You know, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 9 through 10, 1 Timothy 5, 17. You know, pray for them. Offer a word of encouragement. Cook them a meal. <laughs> you know, do what the Bible says to do to those who are sharing the good news of the gospel with you. When was the last time you told your preacher at church, I love you. Thank you for feeding us today. Thank you for your courage to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with this dark world. Thank you for standing up there and telling us that Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father. People, it's time to be bold for Christ. It's time to stand up and stand out and stand strong on the promises of God and stop letting the wickedness and the darkness of this world drag us down. It's just gonna get worse. <laughs> and that's an encouraging word because that just means we're that much closer to Christ. Do you know him? Do you love him? Do you serve him? You should on all three points. That's gonna be an everlasting reception where you celebrate for eternity. That, that's what can give you hope on some of these dark days. I gotta tell you, I have some pretty down days when I see the wickedness and, and the cursing and, and the people that just spew their violent wickedness against the, the word of God and those who follow after him. It really burdens me a lot to see some of the things that most people don't have to endure. And hearing some of the cursings and, and 
people just being so vile and completely against the things I'm speaking about. And I know it comes with the territory, but I thank God that he's given me such thick skin that I can endure so much persecution and and verbal abuse because I get a lot of it. And sometimes it, it really wears me down. But though your sorrows may last through the night, joy comes in the morning. So no matter what you're facing today, you can look forward to that joyful celebration, that wedding feast, that everlasting reception when we're celebrating being part of the bride of Christ. By having faith in Christ, you'll be united with him forever. You'll have fellowship with God the Father forever. People, that should, that should get you through the darkest day ever. In Matthew 24, 39, it says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, Jesus told us in several places that the day of his return will be just like in the days of Noah, just like in the days of Lot. Okay? You have to kind of think back. What were the days of Noah like? Well, the earth was filled with wickedness. In fact, God was saddened that he had even created man because he saw nothing but wickedness in their heart. Sadly, man hasn't changed much over time. The days of Lot, I mean, we're talking Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities that were destroyed for their wickedness, their abominable behavior, their perversions. But you know what? The time of Noah, the doom was universal, okay? The rich were killed right alongside the poor. The, the, the wise and the learned were killed right next to the ignorant and illiterate. The religious died right next to the profane. Young, old, man, woman, child, they all fell in the same ruin. I'm sure there were some that had ridiculed Noah, mocked him, laughed at him. I mean, it took him several decades to build this giant ark. I'm sure, there was people saying, yeah, there's not a body of water for miles around here, you dumb old man. I'm sure he took his share of jests and people making fun of him, you know, calling it madness those critics who judged Noah's work, they drowned in the same sea that covers all the other people that made fun of him. Those who spoke about his convictions but didn't share in them sank to rise no more. Hmm. The workers who were probably paid to help build this ark, even though they were working on it, they didn't believe in what he was doing to the point of saying, hey, uh, can I come with you? In, in much the same way, Jesus Christ is our ark today, okay? Because outside of Christ, everyone is doomed to a final destruction. To every man, woman, and child that refuses Come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, God in flesh, the Savior of the world, the Messiah who was prophesied. Outside of Christ, no one, no matter what age, what status, what amount of wealth you might have, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus, you won't be saved. It's like a a huge apathy over the face of the earth. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm living for myself. I'm doing it my way. You know, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Until that day came and the rain started. Everybody's like, huh, it's pretty hard rain, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably nothing. It'll be gone in a couple hours. 
<laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. Even the waters from the deep came up from beneath the earth. There wasn't a single wise man upon the face of the earth that wasn't in the ark. Yet the whole world was filled with folly, foolishness, self-preservation, doubting the most true God. Seems strange looking back, doesn't it? That on the whole face of the earth, only those within the ark were saved. Everyone else perished. That's a small, tiny percentage of the whole population of the world with just a few people in the boat. Hmm. You ever wonder why Moses didn't just, not Moses, Noah didn't just like squash those two little mosquitoes? Come on, Noah. Do me a favor. Help a brother out. <laughs> In John 3, in John 3, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about this probably all week. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, saying, you must be born again. Uh, verse 3, Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In order to be born again, you have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Romans 10, 9 tells us. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna talk about this, John chapter three, most of this week, um, because it talks about the condition of the heart and, and the planting of the gospel in good soil in Matthew 13, you know, the parable of the sower. Um, we need to have our hearts renewed or regenerated by the Holy Spirit. So there's, there's a lot of language in the American culture that talks about being born again. You know, we've heard these terms for years. Regeneration actually comes from two Greek words that can be literally translated as born again. But a lot of people probably don't think of regeneration when they hear this phrase. I mean, there's so much confusion over what it means to be born again because there, there's so many who claim to be Christians that think and live just like unbelievers do, okay? And it doesn't help when you see all these different churches and denominations defining regeneration differently from each other. So it gets a little confusing sometimes. But I want to talk about this to try to see if I can clear this up. Um, seems like every Christian denomination has their own doctrine of regeneration. But Jesus Christ himself declares we all need to be born again. I mean, one of the most important passages on this is right here in John 3. It's not that big of a chapter. I would suggest reading the whole chapter. I mean, Jesus doesn't pull any punches here. He tells Nic Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's pretty straightforward, don't you think? Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So regeneration, being reborn spiritually and receiving a, a heart of flesh in place of a heart of stone, like Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20 talks about, is necessary to seeing the Father. I think the Pharisees thought this was a strange thing because a lot of them believed they were entitled to the kingdom because they were physical descendants of Abraham, as if that's going to save you, okay? No one's born a child of the kingdom, <laughs> And, and your family ties don't matter if the Holy Spirit hasn't changed the heart. John 8, 31 through 59 talks about this. There's no way around it, okay? You're not children of God if you're not born again. If you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are not a child of God. You're not a joint heir with Christ. You know, a lot of people sitting in churches today are unaware they have to be born again. You know, that they, they think it's... There's people who think it's possible you can grow up in the church all your life and never put your faith in Jesus Christ, even if you've been baptized and confirmed. Jesus said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done good works in your name? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Which is ironic because God knows everything. Yet he says, I never knew you. Hmm. 
Has your heart been changed so that you love the things of God? Are you seeking after the kingdom? Are you serving him? Are you serving others? You know, these are questions you need to ask yourself, especially if you've been in the church all your life, or you might take the condition of your soul for granted. You know, there's a lot of people who think, oh yeah, I go to church every Sunday, I drop a couple of bucks in the plate, so I must be going to heaven. I'm a good guy. I always kind of shudder when somebody says, oh yeah, I'm a good person. Because it always reminds me of what Jesus said when someone called him good. He said, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. That's true. No one is good but God alone. 